أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونفخه ونفخه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن عالم So we will continue إن شاء الله today with check-ins starting off with check-ins So now that we're actually getting into mapping out some of the steps what are some of your concrete visions in life? Where is it that you want to see yourself as at the end of your life when the angel of death essentially comes. And that could be today, it could be 10 years from today, it could be five days from today, it could be whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us. But what is it that you have in mind in terms of how you plan to continue living and balancing out the fact that it could happen, your, your, the angel of death could come anytime. And what are some ways in which you're ensuring that you're being systematic, whether it's writing something down, whether it's brainstorming, whether it's documenting, whatever it is, what are you doing regarding that? And what do you feel confident about um, or what are you feeling that you still would like to learn some new skills with regard to when it comes to getting towards that end goal? Okay, so to continue on this, inshallah. So again, we're, we're trying to we're trying to get into the third step, and we mentioned some keywords. If you have any more, you can remember to let us know so we can add them, inshallah. We also mentioned some of the sources of our learning. Where do we get our perceptions developed from or through? How do we get them developed? What what is it that is the basis of a lot of our thought processes and how we perceive the world essentially? and how we navigate in terms of what actions we take because of whatever our perceptions are. So just keep in mind this right here, because this is going to connect to the next things that we're going to talk about, inshallah, for today. Okay, so we talked about motivation is the key, and motivation requires us to have certain things. We have to understand how to do things. We have to feel confident in doing them. We have to feel like we have some option, right? We're not forced into certain things. If we're forced and we're going against our will, essentially, you can see why that can be a little bit less motivating than if we are sort of given a choice, right? Even if it, both choices are to our, to our benefit, even if it's uh, it's both sort of under the umbrella of kind of like directing you to a certain end, but there are still two options you can take. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to pray five times a day. You don't pray six times, you don't pray four times, you pray five times a day. But he allows you to, like uh, in terms of your, like what you say in your, um, like what surah you recite after so that if I have, for example, that's pretty much your choice essentially. It has to be, it's within a framework. You can pick from it. Um, so it is sort of bounded, right? But at the same time, it is some, something of an autonomous situation that you have. And same thing with purpose. If you don't have the why behind things, you're not really going to be motivated. You're not really going to be driven towards certain things. You're going to be confused and you're going to be like all over the place and you're not actually going to make progress because the why is not there. And even if you do it for a little bit, it'll burn out eventually. And so if you ever felt a burnout, um, understand that you might have sort of uh, may have gone a little bit off track in this. And when we talked about the word discipline, so a little bit off of that too. So remember, if your purpose um, was something that didn't match reality, or maybe you felt over, you know, you felt like you could do more than you were actually able to do. So this was a disconnect in terms of your, 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 the reality, like have a tree, tea truth of your mastery. And likewise for autonomy. If you felt like, you know, you had some choices and stuff, but then you ended up encountering that you didn't have, so your assessment, initial assessments was incorrect. And so your expectations based on that initial assessment were also incorrect. And so when you went in, your plans based on those expectations were not correct and so on. So you can see where that leads to. Okay, and we talked about roadblocks. And again, these are some things that we already talked about that I just mentioned for the previous slide. Okay, and we talked about these seven strategies. I'm, I'm giving you all this as a sort of review, right? Because it'll help you understand where the next thing falls in place. So what is your um, mental disposition? What is going on in your head, emotional and mental both? Is there a sense of urgency? Do you feel like you're, you know, 
if you don't get this done by a certain date, something could happen. If you feel like you could die anytime, you're going to do the steps today instead of waiting until tomorrow for the things that need to be done today. Likewise, for positive attitude is how you perceive things. And this is something that, remember positive attitude, right? Because that's something that's going to connect to today. And then the next thing is positive um, or instructive, constructive feedback. Both of them are important. Constructive and instructive. Uh, instructive, yeah, I'm going to just give you like some instructions on how to do certain things, right? Okay, you're, you're, you know, you're making a mistake here. Let's do it this way and stuff, right? As opposed to constructive, um, where you're sort of detaching judgment, um, but you're sort of a like judgment of the inside, but you can judge the outside, obviously, because that's what you know, we would have to do to assess something is right or wrong. That's an external judgment, which is still something that you're supposed to do. Internal judgments, meaning you're, you're saying this person is inherently bad, evil, or this person had bad intentions and stuff. Those are some things that we do not have information about because this is, you know, some, this is one of those things that's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the knowledge that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, you know, the person, whatever intentions they have, they know about those intentions, but um, we don't know about them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows those and we don't know about them. So we don't make that internal judgment. And then having social support. And this is one of the most powerful things um, in terms of success, because if you don't have the social environment, you don't have the atmosphere within which you can thrive, essentially, then you're not going to be able to sustain, usually, your, your your habits and stuff, unless you have a very strong willpower. And willpower is a is like a muscle, um, and it is like, you know, like a, a drainable resource. So you can run out of it. This is what they're saying in terms of science. Um, if, you know... It, Usually people that are successful, they try to start their, their day early um, because they know that during the later part of the day, um, they're going to have less willpower because it would have been depleted. And so they try to get all their you know most important stuff done first. And if, you're, if you do workouts, you also work out your large muscle groups before you work out your smaller ones in the same uh, if, you know, regimen for that day. So some things to keep in mind. So um, they mentioned, for example, uh, the founder of, uh, of Facebook, Mark, what he did is, uh, what he does is that he wears the same clothes. If you notice, like the same shirts, uh, the same color shirts, uh, the same color pants and all that, like every single day, pretty much, right? And his idea is because if I don't have to spend time focusing on making this decision, I can use that, uh, I can use that decision making, whatever, when I have to make a bigger decision, more, more important decision. So I don't want to waste my you know, resource my drainable or like a limited resource by using it up on something that is insignificant essentially, right? So this is his mindset. And so what they do is they know that the willpower decreases over the course of the day. So they'll either have strategies to help like uh, give them, uh, um, like refill the cup of willpower throughout the day or um, and or they'll try to use up the willpower by focusing first on those things that are very important, right? And, and this is how they'll go. So keep these things in mind over here that um, being around certain people can also be that motivator for you or that can be that um, that sort of boost in your willpower being around good company being around you know empowering company for example alcohol alcohol is anonymous the AA alcohol anonymous um, is it alcohol anonymous or is it alcoholics anonymous uh, alcoholics anonymous I believe right I, I don't know why my mind is uh, blanking out for a second. Anyways, um, the AA, uh, the idea that they have over the, uh, in it is that they have this sponsor, or um, this person that sort of like works with you, and they might have had the same experience before, so they understand how you know how things can get complicated. So they'll connect with you, um, or you can connect with them, especially when you are feeling a little bit low, or you're feeling like you're about to sort of like just get back into drinking. So you connect with them, hey, I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, this is one of those vulnerable moments and stuff, and I'd like to talk about it, and I just need a boost. And they get, they sit with this person, and then they get this, um, or you can call them an advocate as well, right? So then they sit with them, and this person has, helps them feel a little bit better, and so they have this added uh, willpower. So having that is going to be one of the most powerful things, and Islam also facilitates that for us, and encourages that for us. Um, okay. And educational material, make sure that you always are trying to learn, you know, if there's training that you can attend, if there's tools or tips, strategies for whatever it is that you're trying to get to, then this is where that can come in. And that's very useful because things change over time and you want to always try to stay up to date on whatever it is that you need to know. Um, you can have core skills that are, you know, relevant throughout time, but there are certain customizations or certain applications that you might need to be aware of a little bit more. And so this is where you can get updates and stuff. 
and then the extended support networks and systems this is where pretty much um social support is more like you know for example if the, the company that you hang out with i sort of mixed it up with five and seven i've mixed up five and seven but social support is more intended over here for um like the company that you keep in general like your friends and like family and like the people you generally try to hang out with and so on the environment you know the the um, pretty much like what kind of um uh, people that you try to be friends with and things like that whereas over here these are experts essentially and this is where you can actually get like these are people that went through whatever it is that you are going through or they understand how to get to wherever it is that you want to get to and so on and they can help you towards that and so this is these are those people over here so five and seven are related but there is a distinction between the two groups over here and social group can uh, social support can also be where um for example, a mentor makes a positive comment about your process in front of your peers, and that makes you feel more confident, right? So that's that's where the seven and five can work together, essentially, because uh, maybe like on Twitter, uh, your mentor comes in and like they mention a comment about like how um, they are really proud of your effort moving forward, like how you're consistently at it and stuff, you're not giving up, right? And then this would make you feel sort of like nice in front of other people and stuff, right? So this is where, and again, this has to be done very carefully and stuff strategically because you don't want it to backfire and stuff because of how somebody might get too reliant on that or they might get addicted to this kind of like support that they needed before they can actually get motivated and stuff, right? This is, this is not for that. I'm, I'm just saying this to say like, it can be necessary in some case, or it can be beneficial in some cases. Don't don't use this as a blanket thing and stuff. So just keep these things in mind. Okay, with that, um, I just have a few questions for you today, inshallah, and then I'm gonna conclude. So this is the last thing that I'm gonna talk about today, um, or this is the only thing I'm gonna talk about today. But I want you to really understand the concept that I'm presenting over here, okay? Now, I want you to take a moment, answer these questions. Right? And by answer, I mean, pick which of these options are your explanatory styles. How do you explain a situation? Let's say you pass an exam. Is you Are you going to look at it and say, you know what, I got lucky that this was really hard? Or are you going to say, well, I studied well, and so I passed? What is your option going to be? And you can answer this in your uh, in the chat. Uh, don't, don't unmute your mic and answer. Just... Um, mention in the chat and i'll see what's going on inshallah the next one is you filled an exam how do you respond do you say i did not study enough for this exam or you say i always do poor doing exams another scenario you were stopped by a white police officer do you respond all white police officer are racist or some safety concern may have come up and assuming here that uh, the question over here assumes um, I, I should have clarified this here but it assumes that uh, you are not, uh, you're, you're not by like color, skin color, you're not white, as they might define it, right? So you might be a colored person, meaning it could be you know, brown, uh, you could be black, you could be whatever it is and stuff, right? Just, just non-white skin color. This is, again, just going by skin color or skin tone, I should say. So you might say, which would, how would you respond to this? Now, again, this does... Um, this does have something to do with your particular context and different people have different contexts. Some people may have more of this happening uh, in their lives compared to other people. But I, I just want, you know, I, I'm just trying to make a point over here. So the question in itself is not the big issue. The, 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 the how you explain things, right, because that's where we're going over here, is the main objective of this over here. So. Um, I, I definitely understand that some of these things may not be politically correct or whatever, um, and I don't intend to um, make this any political, anything political, and I don't want to undermine the experiences of different people, but I'm hoping to get a, a message across essentially, and that is um, helping you figure out what your explanatory styles are and how you can navigate that behavior moving forward. So how do you respond to something like this? Another question, you tried working with a therapist, you did not find success. Now, I, I put a star next to success because, again, experience is very important here. Uh, you might have a different definition of success. We can also unpack that and figure out what actually uh, success should be like. But um, that's not the purpose of this particular uh, exercise, essentially. Remember, success would be defined as improvement in this particular context. I don't mean to define it in a different way. 
an improvement towards you know in terms of like let's say you get feel better your relationships the relationships are improving and things like that that's what i mean by success so that's why i put a star here i don't mean um other things where it could be like you know misunderstood or something i just wanted to make it simple again the questions are not as important as um, the explanatory style So how do you explain that? Do you say the therapist did not work for me or the therapist don't work for me, period? This therapist versus all therapists. Another question. Another four questions, let me see. Wait, can you go back for one second? Can I just put A for the first one and B for the second one? Instead of yeah, yeah, you can you can do it, yeah. Okay. When when I go over the answers and stuff, inshallah, um, you can um, you can see what you know. You can compare your answers to what I'm going to give you as the answers or the explanation, inshallah. So yeah, you can say A B A B B A, whatever the order is. You could pick whatever. Um, but yeah, this is for your reference. Though. I don't, um, I'm gonna you, you can mention in the uh, chat so I can see like what you guys are thinking, but at the same time. Um, this is also for your personal reference because it's a mini assessment of what you might be thinking like. Okay, and be, try to be, um, try to be as like, as raw and authentic and, you know, um, as, you know, honest about this as possible. It is not about how I'm going to perceive you. It's more about, again, how you are going to understand about what are you going to understand about yourself in terms of how you explain things, how you look at things, how you react to certain things. So the next question, you tried working with a therapist and you did not find success. Same question, but a different or a different same scenario, but a different thing I wanted to focus on and a different aspect to focus on. I did not apply all the strategies the therapist suggested or the therapist was not good at her job. Next question. Uh, and by the way, some of these questions may seem to have a very easy answer, but I don't want you to pick the easy answer. I want you to pick the correct answer for you. What is it that you normally do? What is it that you normally try to do? Or not, not try to, what, what is your first reaction? What is your first thought? Or what is it that kind of sort of takes over as a thought that helps you decide what you want to do next, good or bad? Next one, you became angry in a meeting and became rude. How do you think about yourself? I'm such a bad person or I was tired and hungry. Next one, you invited friends for dinner. One dish did not get touched much. As in, you cooked a bunch of different things. One of them did not get eaten much. So how do you respond? Another dish was eaten up a lot, for example. I must be a bad cook, so the people only ate what was the least bad tasting. Or, people must have liked one dish more than another, both being good. Meaning both were good, but they just liked one more than the other, so they preferred that one. Or, people were just trying to be nice, and my food actually tasted really bad, but they just went to the one that was least bad tasting. Next one. Your halaqa had lots of attendees one night. Lots of people came that night. Now how do you respond? The attendees, attendees must not have had anywhere else to go that night. So they came here. Great for them, but you know this wasn't their first priority. Or the attendees... Okay, I made a typo over here. This shouldn't be R, but it should be chose. Let me fix that really quick. Oh no, the answer is short. Okay. The attendees chose to come because it was me it has meaning to them, meaning it had value for them, it had something driven something that was driving them. So the word meaning over here is a keyword that you can use elsewhere. Um, but that I want you to keep in mind here. So meaning is a very important keyword over here. Connects to purpose. So if you have the answers, you can let me know and I'll check. I'm seeing some answers here.
Okay, so let me tell you the answers now, or just kind of go over some of the answers. Um, okay, and this is again going back to explanatory styles. I want to give you these answers, and then I'm going to get into the next thing, inshallah. Now, again, the answers are not necessarily like correct or incorrect. They're more which one is a way to, which one is, of the two, which one is more likely to be the answer of a successful person? Okay? And here, I'm going to define what successful means in the next slide, inshallah. All right, so, in the next, you know, after I finish this. So, in here, I studied well, and so I passed. Meaning, you're attributing this because of your, like, your efforts. Whereas, I got lucky, the test was really hard. You're actually saying over here, that it wasn't something I had control over. If you remember when we talked about learned helplessness, right? You felt like, well, I can't really do anything. I'm a failure, essentially, right? So over here, it must have been like I just got lucky. You know, I didn't do really like I didn't do the effort, and you know, I don't know how in the world I passed. The other person is thinking, well, I definitely put the effort in, and so it makes sense I passed. So they're correlating the effort to the end result, essentially, right? Over here, this person is saying, well, you know what? I don't know how I got there. So they're saying that it wasn't because of my efforts, essentially. It wasn't something I could do anything about. Luck is something where you feel like you don't have control over, right? So they're disconnecting themselves and their abilities and so on from there. So this is why um, successful people do not think like that. I got lucky, the test was really hard, and it was just me like, getting lucky, right? Um, the next question, or the next scenario, you fill the exam. Well, again, process-oriented and... Uh, not something that you're saying that it always happens like this. Okay, so you're saying that it happened in this particular case and I could change that next time. As opposed to, well, I'm defeated, I always do this instead of it's always happening like that, right? And I want you to come up with a word that can describe people who think like this, okay? Describe the person who thinks like in the orange and describe the person who thinks like the other answer. So think of one word for each of these people. And mention that to me after I go over this slide and the next slide. So I'm going to ask you. So in the meantime, just kind of figure out what, how, we, how would you define a person who has these kinds of thoughts, right? The next one is you were stopped by a white police officer. And again, assuming that you are a person of color. So all white, officer, uh, white police officers are racist. So that's why they stopped me. Or maybe some safety concern may have come up. Meaning maybe my lights were out or... Um, and it was nighttime, for example, or maybe um, I was swerving, or maybe like my license plate, like, you know, the, the registration uh, was expired or whatever, right? Maybe something was that. Maybe I was going a little bit faster than I should have. So this, this some safety concern may come up. You're disconnecting your, yourself from these pervasive, uh, you know, scenarios and stuff like all of them are like that or everything is like that. Okay. The next one is you tried working with therapists and you did not find sight. Okay, well maybe the, the therapist gave you some strategies that you didn't try or you didn't really pursue longer than maybe the first time. So maybe you just did it once and that was the end of it. You didn't try. You didn't keep trying. So maybe that was a, the issue over there, right? Um, but if you say that the therapist didn't work over for me at all, right? Like no therapist works for me. Sorry, I mixed that up. But I went to the next question. I went to this one right here. Yeah. So the therapist was not going to adapt. So if you blame the strat, if you blame the therapist, but you're not really taking responsibility for where you could have done something, then that's where uh, the disconnect happens. So successful people are going to look at it as the top, top one. Oh, maybe I should have tried all the strategies. Hey, you know, maybe I didn't try them. Okay, and again, these answers I'm giving you very simplistic scenarios, so don't overthink it. You tried working with therapists, you didn't find success, so maybe the therapist doesn't work for me versus therapists don't work for me. So maybe you tried, you tried, really tried trying all the strategies and stuff and you tried everything and it just didn't work. Maybe the person, for some reason, there was a disconnect and you were really trying and the person was really trying and it just didn't work out. It's okay, I mean, it happens. So you should go to another one. But if you say, well, because of my one or two experiences, nobody will work for me, no therapist is going to work for me, then you can go back to the, the one of the first lessons that we had where we talked about the data points and how the line of best fits are made. And if you only have three data points and you're trying to make an entire line from this, then you can see where that happens, well, you know, where they, that can lead to. Okay. You became angry in a meeting and became rude. Well, what could have caused that? Maybe you were hungry and tired, and so you just slipped. Okay. 
next time you can plan around it. You can say next time I want to make sure I have enough sleep before the meeting, make sure I have eaten something, a snack or something before I get into the meeting so I don't have these issues that could cause me to slip. I've covered my bases essentially, right? Versus, oh my God, I'm such a bad person. Because if you think like that, you can see how that can lead to a negative cycle. Maybe you had control over something, but you're just kind of attributing it to yourself. You're becoming, you're taking it personally, right? You're sort of attacking yourself instead of attacking the things that, or instead of addressing the things that might have been actually the cause of the whole situation. All right. And then here, you invited friends for dinner. One does not get touched. So if you say, I must be a bad cook, so the people only ate what was the least bad tasting. So again, over here, you're assuming about yourself a certain way. So if you think about yourself as this person who is just like not really that good at things and stuff or whatever, you can see how that can lead to the same kind of end result as I'm such a bad person, right? Instead of saying, well, people must have liked one dish more than another, both being good. Or in this situation, and I could have asked it differently, um, you could have said, for example, you know what? Maybe this particular meal I cooked in a hurry, so it wasn't that good. Or maybe I forgot to add something or whatever. Um, and this is just this time or whatever. There could be like many different things. But again, for that kind of stuff, you would have to ask if a person actually liked it or not. So you have to know if the person is not eating it because it wasn't good or if they're not eating it because they enjoyed something a lot more and they would they just really enjoyed that other dish and stuff. Right? So they just went at it. Right? Um, so, for example, you might have, you know, in parties, for example, if you have little kids, usually little kids, you give them pizza, um, and, you know, nowadays. Not, not not all the time, but like, you know, some, you know, just have pizza there because you're thinking that kids are more likely to eat pizza. So you do that. It's not because the other food isn't good. It's just that maybe the kids are just used to that kind of you know, other meal, like, like pizza, for example, or macaroni and cheese or something like that. Okay, and then the halakha thing. The attendees, did I? Oh, yeah, okay, I, I changed the original one. I, I self changed this. So the attendees are, the attendees chose to, to come because it has meaning to them. Let me fix that really quick before I forget. So the attendees chose to come because it has meaning to them. If I say it like that, my attitude and the rest of the halakha is gonna be affected by that, right? As opposed to if I say, well, like it's a defeated mindset. Okay, well, this is the last place they would ever want to come. And so they came here because there was nothing else going on anywhere else, right? So they just ended up, okay, you know, if you wanna go somewhere, instead of being like nowhere, which is at least go to the haraka because there's nothing else to do besides that. That's it, right? So again, some things to keep in mind like that. Okay, I hope, um, let me look at your answers really quick to see what you guys said. Okay, so I'm looking at the, I looked at the answers and you can assess yourselves and now look at the next topic that I'm going to bring up and see how it connects with you and how you answer the question. Now, there are three explain three components of explain explanatory styles. And I asked you, what is, the, what is one word that you think of when you think about the orange answers or what kind of person answers with an orange answer and what kind of person answers with the, with the regular, the other answer, the, the black color answers. Can somebody answer that? Uh, the optimist answers with the orange and the pessimist answers with the other one. Yeah, the optimist. I actually made a mistake and actually showed you the answers first. But you might have already figured it out too, so that's good. Yeah, so now in this case, um, there are three components to it. There's actually four components, but I'm going to focus on these three components first, okay? And that is, one of them is permanence, as in time. So you might use things like, I always or I never, I can't ever do this and stuff, right? I can't, and like, I can't ever get myself to do this or this and stuff, right? Or I always, like, you know, do bad or whatever and stuff, right? So these are the kind of answers that a person might give who has, um, uh, this, this is the kind of um, answer that a pessimist would give, and it's attached to permanence. Now, I want to break it down over here. There is a distinction between thinking about it in one like a like a permanent way like it always happens to me and can and then also thinking about it in a non-permanent way okay so for example if i say um, let me give you examples actually from um let me give you examples of like you know answers that a person 
my give who is considering everything to be always negative. Okay. Now, permanent per, permanence in a bad situation, you might say, and this is a pessimist saying, I uh, my my shoulder never gets better. If you have pain in your shoulder, it never gets better, right? Um, or um, I never um, ever get to do this or that, or I never like my my life never gets better or something like that. So when you use these words, you're saying it as a permanent thing, okay? But for the example of the shoulder, for example, I might say my shoulder. Um, when I when I was working out, for example, my shoulder was already kind of like you know hurt, and the lifting weights, for example, didn't really help that situation. It kind of made it worse. So you're sort of attaching it to something temporary. Okay, you know what? Like I shouldn't have done that because it only it only affected me because of the situation or whatever. It wasn't that it wasn't the permanent thing. It was a temporary thing. So an optimist is going to look at things in a in negative things in a temporary manner. A pessimist is going to look at negative things in a permanent manner. I hope that makes sense. An optimist is going to look at negative things in a temporary manner. And a pessimist is going to look at negative things in a permanent manner. Okay. The next question. Pervade or the next thing at the aspect, right? Pervasiveness. These are blanket statements that apply to all of those. Remember I mentioned like this one right here about the police officer. So that's a blanket statement across all groups or like a specific group or, you know, across multiple aspects of life and things like that, right? So a therapist uh, never works for me. I hate my life and I don't mean to undervalue or undermine the experiences that people go through because of uh, overwhelm and if they have been diagnosed with depression and so on. I'm not, I'm not trying to um, get into that. But I'm, what I'm really trying to address over here is the mindset that a person might have, right? So a, per, a per, per person who considers something sort of uh, universal versus um, specific, right? Universally, they're going to say that when it comes to their life, they're going to say, I hate my life. This is a pessimist and they're using like a blanket statement. It's a universal statement as in they can, I just hate my life in every aspect of it. Right? Does that make sense? And then therapist, therapist never work for me as opposed to saying this therapist didn't work for me or this in, this situation in my life, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really liking and stuff, but I like other things and stuff. So pervasive across the board, all groups, all categories, whatever, just a blanket statement. Okay? So keep that. And then the optimist is going to look at things specifically. They'll say, well, no, things are normally good. And just in this case right here, something wrong happened. So I am good. I'm a good driver, for example. They're gonna also use this as uh, um, actually. Let, let me address. This. So they're they're not gonna say that the ne therapist never. They're gonna say therapist. This therapist didn't work for me, or this aspect of my life I don't like. Right. And then on the other hand, they're gonna look at good things in a more uh, universal manner. Like I am a good driver. I am a hard worker and stuff. Right? They're gonna use that as a blanket statement. So blanket statements. Um, I should have said blanket negative statements. Um, are for negative, uh, sorry, blanket negative statements are for pessimists and blanket positive statements are for optimists. Does that make sense? So permanence, optimist, think good about things as the normal scenario. The exception is when they come up with uh, specific instances or something happened or occurrence that happened at a certain time or whatever. So optimists consider good things to be the permanent, the default. The exception to that rule is the negative situations occurrence. The pessimists look at the like everything to be by default bad, except certain things that come up and they just attribute that to luck or something like that. Okay, same thing with pervasiveness. Blanket statements of how, like good stuff, right, is an optimist. Blanket statements of bad stuff is a pessimist i hope that's making sense over here so the the um the optimist is gonna focus on for example negative things as individual specific events as opposed to the default norm pessimist is gonna look at this specific incident that happened uh, uh, the negative thing and gonna consider it as like a universal thing it's always happening like that 
A pes- uh, an optimist, on the other hand, when it comes to good things happening, they will consider uh, the good thing, the specific good thing, as the, the default normal case, and a, ne- a neg- negative thing happening as a specific incident, right? Does that make sense? So a pessimist is going to consider good things to be very case specific, and they're not going to consider that the norm. They're going to consider good things as an exception to a general rule. The optimist is going to consider bad things as an exception to a, 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 of a general rule of good. Okay, personalization now. This is where you, it's related to your self-esteem. So this is something where a person is sort of like attributing the failure to themselves. Like this is because I am a bad person or whatever and stuff, right? So this is a person who has um, like low esteem versus like, you know, high esteem, self-esteem, right? Or self-image or self-worth or whatever you want to call it. And this is where a person says, for example, well, I must be bad or I must be like a bad cook or something like that, whatever, as a default rule. And this is a pessimist mindset. An optimist is going to say, well, here, I made a mistake. But that's just an exception. Maybe I was tired or something like that. They'll just be more strategic about that. Does that make sense? So the default for an optimist is that they consider themselves good, except in certain scenarios, and then they they confine it to that particular scenario itself. An optim a pessimist is going to look at um, something bad, for example, as a default ba- a default condition, and something that is good as an exception to that rule. And so this is where, again, they're going to say, well, you know, it wasn't something that I, it didn't have anything to do with me. It's something else that did something or whatever, and it's them being good and not me. So they're going to look at themselves in a really negative way, right? They're not going to be empathetic towards themselves. So I hope, I hope this is making sense. Okay, this all connects to pessimism versus optimism. And then there's this concept of hope. Hope over here is something so powerful because it is something that helps towards getting to your end goals. You might have had lots of failures in life, but you know, an optimist is going to say, well, these failures are part of the reason of my successes today. Those failures were just learning opportunities for me. They're reframing them. They're looking at this as something where, hey, I made a mistake. I learned from what, what, what went wrong. And now I'm not doing those things again. So it was a very specific thing. I figured out what was wrong with it and I, I addressed it. A pessimist is going to look at the same situation and they're going to say, this is my, uh, like my, like oh, this negative incident is my default. And sometimes I get lucky and things go out of another way. So there's sort of learned helplessness. Um, their, their learned helplessness has sort of kicked in over here. So there's, their default is negative always, uh, wherever I am. Uh, in every situation of my life, and it's also related to me, I'm also a bad person. Okay, this is a negative scenario, right? This is what they have as a negative. So this is the positive. So hope over here is a thing that helps in terms of getting you towards the things that you need to get to. This is the person who is um, very hopeful about things. And they're going to say, for example, um, you know what? I was really tired that day, and that's why I, I was rude. So what I'm going to do is I'm not a bad person. I just didn't sleep enough. So let me go ahead and get some snacks before the meeting. And let me just make sure that I have slept enough before the meeting so I don't slip again. That's it. They're very empathetic towards themselves. Okay. So some other things to keep in mind over here about the growth mindset. I know this got that got a little bit dry because I was trying to like give you the different aspects of it. But until as you get used to it, you're gonna understand what I mean in practice. This is just a concept. When you practice, when you start applying it, when you're thinking about it more in your life, you're gonna start seeing the differences, inshallah. So the growth mindset has some things to keep in mind, some components. It has to be realistic. Obviously, you're focusing on the truth, not like the capital T truth, not the small T truth. You should have a very can-do attitude. Like, I can do this. Again, connect it back to reality. If it's not connected back to reality, then you can having the can-do attitude doesn't really help you, right? Uh, this is like, a, a somebody mentioned this and as saying that um, this is like having like a, you know, a lot of wind on your sails, right? But you don't have a port to land on. Like, you, you're, not, you're not anchored on something or... Like you have no purpose that kind of drives you and stuff, right? Um, and it's not something that's realistic over here too. You're just like, you have a bunch of energy and stuff. Like I can do this and stuff, but you're not actually like able to do it because you can't really like go towards something that's reasonable, realistic. And then you should be very adaptable. Look at the context. If you have certain core skills, then great. You can just learn the, you know, the supplementary skills for that particular context. You know how to live life. You know how to get, you know, buy food and things like that. And you can go to a different country. All you need to know is just 
just the language, right? And that's it. You still know how to pay money, for example. You know how to count. You know how to like you know move around. You know how to get like sit in a taxi, for example, or you know like ride your bicycle or drive a car and stuff. Right? Those are skills that you have. So you can go to any part of the world and stuff, and you can do all these things. However, the only thing that's stopping you sometimes is just not knowing the local language. So there are certain things that you got to say. It's like code words. These code words that I have to say to get certain things that I want. I know what I want. Now I just need to adapt to my context, and this is a little bit of adaptation, and that's it. Now there might be some core skills that you don't know you can learn those as well maybe you don't know how to drive so you can learn how to drive and that's necessary in that environment okay maybe you never ridden a bus so you can figure out how the bus system works and stuff and go you know through that so that's an adaptation some of them might be core skills and if you already have the core skills these are supplementary skills that are confined to that particular context and they might be different in different contexts so this is adaptation so breaking down like your your entire um, ability to navigate into components of it core skills versus secondary skills and so on and then purpose driven, it has to have meaning in whatever you're doing. You should be driven by purpose. We have a meaning attached to why you're doing something because it, you, there's a value attached to it. If it, there's not, if it's something that's like minimal value or it's not something that you can sustain, it's like, a, you know, just a temporary thing that's going to get you happiness for a day. But then after that, it doesn't really going to like, it's not going to continue making you happy thereafter. And that's not really what we mean by purpose. It has to be something that's called the, like, it's just something that drives you day in, day out. You wake up, you're looking forward to doing the things that are attached to that purpose. You should also be optimistic. Remember, your your default for an optimist, the default is that everything is good all the time. A good meaning like in your life, everything is generally good and stuff, right? So that's a permanent good and pervasive good across you know different categories across the time blanket good. And you also have um, um what was that? Sorry, I blanked up. Personalization. Don't you know detach yourself. You're 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 good by you know by default. But there are certain flaws and stuff like that you can address. So again, those are exceptions. That's how you should frame it. The bad stuff is an exception to the general rule. The general is that you're good. That's how an optimist thinks. And always be very hopeful because hopeful is where you can continue moving forward. You can have expectations. You can say, like, I'm expecting to make this much progress, but I hope that I can do more than that, inshallah. Now, your, your plan is based on your expectations, but your hope is where if you go, if you exceed your expectations, then this is where you, you fall into your hopeful category. So you have your expectations, right? And then right above that, you're going to say is your hopeful area where you have hope that you're going to get to. But realistically, you may not get there. And it's okay because that's part of your expectation. So differentiate between hope and um, expectations. And then uh, self-motivated. Again, that goes back to the thing that we mentioned above, the AMP, the autonomy, motivation, and purpose. And that, again, is connected back to purpose-driven. Um, okay. And then great relationships, meaning you should have that social support. And that's why I emphasize step number five and step number seven over here. Step number seven is more experts. And step number five is your social circle and stuff like that. That is um, going to either help you or not help you towards your end goals. And uh, you need to have a very successful mindset that you're, you're success driven, as in you have something um, that is... Uh, like you, you have a defined definition or you have you have a definition or you have defined what your success looks like you have mapped it out it's detailed and so on and so you can measure that progress and stuff like that and these are the things that lead you to become successful so that's what i mean over here and people like this are also um great motivators they are great influencers they're great leaders and stuff these are people that can drive change be it enough and then they also have self-empathy these are people with a growth mindset, you know, these are people that are, um, they have self-empathy, meaning they look at themselves and they say, well, I woke up late today, but then now they also look back at why that could have been. Maybe you woke up at, let's say, six o'clock in the morning, right, before Fajr, um, and you're like, okay, well, I wanted to pray Qiyamul Layl, so I woke up a little bit late. So you say, okay. Well, that's because I went to sleep at four o'clock in the morning. So four o'clock until six o'clock is two hours. That's that's maybe not enough time to take a nap or like to get re full rest, right? And so you woke up late because you slept late. So you say, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. Let me just go ahead and put my time, like make sure that I go to sleep at, I don't know, like 11 o'clock instead of four o'clock in the morning. So you do that and the next time you find yourself, it's a little bit easier for you to wake up earlier. So that's self-empathy. You look at yourself and say, oh, okay, well, I get it. I get you feeling frustrated. 
but at the same and you're not judgmental in the same like well, you're a bad person because you woke up late for fajr but you instead say oh well you know what um i could have done things a little bit differently so you're you're more systematic you're more disciplined and remember we said discipline is uh system uh, scientifically looking at whatever it is that you're doing and seeing if it actually progresses you towards your goal and being realistic about it if you went to sleep at four o'clock do not expect yourself to wake up at six o'clock and be really like you know energized and excited and happy and stuff right just understand that you know there is practicality there is reality that you need to attach yourself to okay with that um i wanted you to just understand the 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 mindset uh, understand the explanatory styles that we have oftentimes and how that can impede our growth and development and our progress towards particular goals and stuff like that so that is what i want you to think about think about that mindset that you have the, the like the explanatory styles that you have just look at how you're going through through things if i give you strategies and you're not ready because you have certain of these mindsets for example the negative mindsets here right the the, the pessimist mindset then you know this question right here for example i did uh, the, you know you tried working with a therapist and you did not find success well i can give you lots of strategies and if you don't apply them or if you already automatically just rule out those strategies because you're like well you know what i i tried something like this before it didn't work and stuff right well maybe you didn't try the right way maybe you didn't try the right strategies maybe this is a different strategy maybe there's so many different things that we can look at right so if you already cut out like the stuff that i, I would give you then we're not going to make progress it's as simple as that you know if you have if you go to a therapist if you go to a coach if you go to any of these people they're going to tell you the same thing hey look we cannot guarantee your success um we can only tell you that you know we will give you the tools and it's up to you if you want to try them or not right if you don't try these strategies then you don't blame the service you just say okay well i didn't choose to do these things so that's it so it, it had nothing to do with the therapist necessarily in this context it had to do with just whether you applied it or not so this is what i wanted to make sure that i you know conveyed that we can give tools and strategies, but whether people actually implement them or not, whether they are actually ready to apply them or not, whether they even understand where they're coming from or not, it's gonna have an impact on whether they're actually successful or not with those strategies. So this is why I'm spending a little bit more time before giving you the strategies on how to start thinking, how not to think, how not to become your own impediment towards your success. So your homework is to analyze these things in yourself Think about how you're answering, uh, how you're responding to particular scenarios. What is your reaction? What is your first thought that comes to it? And how are you being self-empathetic? It's easy to be empathetic to other people, but you can also be really rough on yourself sometimes. You should definitely hold yourself accountable, but you should also be realistic about it. Don't like curse yourself or don't hate yourself and then think that you know, you're gonna be motivated the next day because you're living with yourself. It's like you're living with like a negative person with you all the time. And then you're expecting you to be extremely happy and motivated and optimistic. Doesn't make sense, right? Be realistic about it with yourself. Be gentle when you need to be gentle. Be rough with yourself when you need to be. If you're being like really lazy and like really like, um, just like you know, you have you feel like you have everything going on in the right way in the world, and you're just like not really doing anything in life. You're just like sitting around and just be like, yeah, it's okay. You know, I have everything that I ever need and stuff, and I'm good to go. Well, no, you can always do more and stuff, and that's not sustainable either because something could happen. So you should always like hold yourself accountable in those ends. So you can be a little bit more like tough on yourself when you're getting really lax, but at the same time, uh, lax for no reason. You could also be tired and you could be taking a break, and that's not laxity. That's just you're just you're just taking a break. But on the other hand, if you're being like if things are not really working out for you, just like you would advise somebody else, advise yourself. Take a moment for yourself and say, hey, okay, what's going on over here? Why am I feeling like this and stuff? And then just really understand where that's coming from, and then accept it, and then say, okay, well that makes sense. I could have done this differently, or maybe I thought this you know my first reaction in this particular scenario was to think that um everyone doesn't like me or whatever and stuff but maybe it was just that i was really tired or maybe like you know i don't know maybe people were tired or maybe they had like some other things that they were focused on and it had nothing to do with me so you can disconnect yourself so don't make it so personal that you take everything personally if somebody makes a comment about for example um your, your work right let's say you, you did something maybe you were writing um you were drawing on or maybe you were writing like i don't know on the board right and maybe your handwriting wasn't perfect so if a person comments on your handwriting they're not attacking you so don't take it personally like that disconnect that this is going back to this concept of personalization personal blame and stuff like that if you feel like the person was saying something about your handwriting and saying something about you that's wrong you shouldn't think like that right you should tell yourself no my writing is not me it is something that i'm doing and i can improve on that so it's not saying that I'm a bad person because I couldn't like write cursive. 
doesn't mean that because my letters were not even in the space, or like my line was perfectly straight when I was writing, um, that that's the end of it, right? Um, you say no, okay, I can work on this particular skill, and that's the end of it. So don't take it very like that. So these are some things to take, you know, to make sure that you start focusing on as part of your homework. And with that, inshallah, if you guys have any questions, inshallah, with regard to the three explanatory styles that we said and, and the thing that's attached to it of a hope. Let me know. Um, and I, I get it that this is the first time, so it might be a little bit more confusing than, than the future instances, inshallah, when we discuss it. But I hope it gives you something to think about, inshallah. And I also hope that it helps you take a step back, analyze how you're thinking, analyze what you could be doing that could be hindrances in your own progress, and start disconnecting from those things. So with that, I am done, inshallah. And if you have any questions, I'm going to stop the recording. So if you have any uh, questions, you can ask each other. And anybody that watches this video later on, inshallah, then they can also ask questions. Um, I think the email address is youth at icmnc.org. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakallah. Alhamdulillah. Shadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.